All right, we got a question about who will win sixth man of the year, which brings us to our DraftKings Sportsbook segment. Who will win sixth man of the year? Um, all right, according to DraftKings Sportsbook, uh, Malik Monk is the odds on favorite to win. He's at minus 115. Tim Hardaway Jr. at plus 175. And Norman Powell at plus 750. No one else has better odds uh, than I think plus 1,200. So, those three guys uh, leading the way. I do have one, uh, I guess, dark horse candidate, uh, if you will. Um, Malik Monk having an outstanding season. His playmaking, he's leading. Crazy. He's, he's like averaging a career high in points, obviously, but he's averaging a career high in assists. He's never averaged, I think, more than four. He's averaging over five this year. Second year with that team. He's been awesome. Tim Hardaway Jr., 17 a game, 36% from three. Norman Powell, a beacon if you will, of efficiency in 25 minutes a game, 13 points a game, shooting 45% from three. All those guys are still in the running. I, I certainly would put Monk as the leader right now. Um, I don't know that Norman Powell gets there unless there's a, a stretch where there's someone gets hurt yeah. and he's playing more minutes because the, the production is not matching. He's been awesome, but the, the overall production is not matching. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., with the restructuring of the Mavs, this these you know PJ Washington coming in, this. Daniel Gafford coming in, um, they've won six games in a row. He's got a chance to. He's got a chance. All right, I mentioned my one dark horse uh, candidate, Tommy Karis Levert, uh, plus twenty two hundred right now in DraftKings Sportsbook, uh, having a really good season. And with the way the Cleveland Cavaliers have played over the last twenty games uh, and risen in the standings. He's going to for sure be in the conversation and deservedly so at the end of the season. I wanted to ask you about the Mavs just in general. The six-game winning streak obviously aver obviously added Gafford and PJ at the deadline. Only teammates averaging 25, 5, and 5 are Kyrie and Luca. Um, what's their ceiling? I hate this question, <laughs> but like, is this a team that like like you've you know, you've two transcendent talents in this backcourt? Is this a team that can win the finals? As a general feeling on to, on this year's NBA, I think the Western Conference has a more wide open feel than the Eastern Conference. Some really good teams in the Eastern Conference, but I could probably name four or five. Uh, yeah, four or five that I think could win a championship this year. Um, maybe less. With the West, it feels like similar to last year where I, I made the argument you could talk me into seven teams winning the West you could probably talk me into seven or eight teams winning the West. And Dallas is one of those teams, for yeah. sure. Um, we know who Luka is. We know who Luka is in the playoffs. Kyrie has the experience. He's got the big-time clutch moments in the playoffs. Um, this roster now feels like a roster that complements the two of them. Yep. So I don't want to put a ceiling on them, Tommy. I'll yep. say I, I want to see more. I think you answered the question of, without answering. Yeah, yeah, it. but yes. it's a very good team, and it's honestly like we we did the show with Nikias and Steve on Monday about, um, you know, teams to watch, and like we we all agreed on our text chain on Sunday night. We were like, we all kind of want to talk about Dallas, but we also would rather talk about them more in depth once we've seen this group together for yeah. five to ten games. Let me ask about. Gafford in particular, and I'm not comparing the two of them at all because they're completely different players in every way, but I remember when Boston made the white trade, there was a sense, and you said this at the time, but there was a sense with a lot of players around, the, like, players around the league knew how good he was, whether or not everyone else knew. It was kind of like, this is, a, this is a great fit. I would say with Gafford for the last, like, year and a half, I probably, there's probably been, like, seven or eight guys who've, like, brought him up unprompted. Really? Yeah. Been like, this is the guy, like, like, I don't want to, you know, blow this, but I'm going to say names or whatever, but it's like people were like, we want to trade for him. And I have no idea why it didn't happen. And so when that happened, it didn't get a lot of hype at the time, but clearly it's clear. Like you watch them, you watch them play that OKC game. Clearly he knows what he's doing with Luca from the jump. And so is there a world where you like, like that and not to downplay Washington, but like the Gafford edition in particular could be a thing that we look back on in two months and be like, okay, no one was saying on February 10th or 8th or whatever the day the deadline was, that this was going to be the the pickup of the offseason. But heading into the trade playoffs... Deadline, or, trade deadline, yeah, yeah. Of the trade deadline, but heading into the playoffs, it really was. Um, Yeah, it gives them, obviously, more depth at that position, which is something I think they needed. And 
in particular, because Lively has been really good for a rookie, you, you obviously don't know how he's going to play in the playoffs, right? Um, so I think Gafford, just with that a little bit more experience, a little bit more experience, a little bit more of like, he knows what the fuck is going on. Uh, it'll be interesting. It's funny because Luca was joking about like we had to teach Lively how to do the Gortat screen. I I, I want to see more of that little pairing with with Luca and Gafford and pick and roll. Um, yeah, I I, I think it's it's weird because you, you know he got traded from Washington. It's weird because Washington also traded Porzingis to Boston, yeah. which is like. <laughs> unlocked their team in my estimation it's why i they're to me they're the, they're the favorites right now to win he gives them something they haven't had um in a number of ways defensively offensively posting up the two-man action on the weak side with jalen brown getting to his right hand him getting behind the defense like it's it's and by the way when it happened we we're like oh boston got got better right but it's like no they got if, really better if boston wins the championship where does getting Porzingis and, and two first round picks rank in terms of just like ever like who knows what everyone else was yeah. thinking in that trade? But it is it's crazy when you actually like look back and see that deal for how good he is there. Yeah. I think Brad Steven has a chance to get executive of the year. I'll just say that. All right. This has been our DraftKings Sportsbook segment. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code JJ. New customers who deposit $5 or more can get a no-sweat bet up to $1,000 back in a bonus bet if your first bet loses. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code JJ. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, call www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny. 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. One no sweat bet per new customer. Issued as one bonus bet based on amount of initial losing bet. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash promos for deposit, wagering, and eligibility restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources.